Good morning, everybody. So good that you're here. Nice that you're watching. This morning, I want to talk about a subject that affects every one of us, where we all, we all have had, that, had to face that situation. We all, it involves all of us. It's the subject of trusting God. We all, we've heard several sermons about it. We heard so much how to trust God, when, how, when to trust God. And I always think there's also more to the story than just to say to trust God, but of course it's also about control. It's also about how to let go of control and how much control am I giving God over my life and how much am I controlling myself. And for this word, I'd like to pray. Thank you, Jesus, that you're here. Thank you, Jesus, that you love us. Thank you, Jesus, that we can just come to you just as we are. We can embrace your love. We can embrace who you are. We can embrace what you think about us. And I just surrender myself to you this morning. I surrender every one of us this morning that you would just bless us, that you would just speak to our hearts, that not my words will be said, but what you want to be said shall be said. We trust you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You are so good. We love you. Amen. Let us open Psalm 31. I'm reading from the New International Version. Psalm 31, verses 1 through 7. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Keep me from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. I hate those who cling to worthless idols. As for me, I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your love, for you saw my affliction and knew the anguish of my soul. Amen. I love how in verse 6, it, I don't, I, the beginning is a bit harsh, I'd say, but the end, how he says, I hate those who cling to worthless idols, but as for me, I trust in the Lord. And I love how he just says, hey, no matter what you guys are doing, I've decided I'll trust God. And we all know that, that trust is is a fruit that comes from a relationship with God. Trust is not something you can enforce. Trust is not something that you can just say, hey, you need to trust me. It is something that comes by, by being with someone, by knowing someone, by getting to know them intimately. And like that is with, with God, you would have to say, hey, God, I want to know you and I want to know that I can trust you. Because God, he, he's been always, he always has been faithful. And he's, I would say, the one person in our lives who will never, who will never fail us. He's the one person who, will, who you can build your, your foundation upon and know that you will, not be shake, you will not be shaken. I remember coming to the subject of control last year, in the beginning, in the middle of last year, I would say, I had this, this issue in my life where concerning work i wanted something to happen i wanted god to do something for me so i prayed for it every single day for about yeah about six months and i told the story quite often so i prayed for it every day and nothing happened just nothing happened and i was like god i trust you but still in prayer what i did was i said god i trust you but what i actually did was i told god what he should do and i called it trust and that is what I realize for myself. Sometimes I tend to do that. I say, God, I trust you. But then I go into prayer and I have my, my huge folder of information, how I think my life is supposed to run. And I tell God, you need to do it this and this and this and this way. Yet God says, hey, when you say you trust me, why don't you let go of control? Why don't you let me take the steering wheel of your life? So for me, I, trust, I, I trusted God for six months and nothing happened. And then I got so frustrated. I remember this very good. I got so frustrated that I just said, God, I just, I don't want to do this anymore. I just don't care. You just take everything, God. I just don't want to do it anymore. And then what happened was I surrendered it to God. And the next day I got my answer. But it was very interesting because, you know, God is very interested in our heart's position. He doesn't want us to just, just to say we trust him, he wants us to trust him wholeheartedly, which means that when he looks at us, he looks into our hearts, he just wants us to know, hey, he wa rather, he wants us to know that we can rest in him, that we can find rest in him, and we can find assurance in him. We go through life always thinking, God, if you really love me, do this. If God, if you, if you really want me to, to be happy, you would do this. And then people come and say, yeah, I don't trust God. I don't, I don't, God doesn't love me. He doesn't do what I want. 
And then we totally forget that our relationship does not work that way with God. Our relationship with God does not work. God, I tell you what you need to do, and then you, you prove your love to me by doing what I want. More, the relationship with God works by that, that we surrender our lives to him, and that he blesses us if we truly surrender to him. And, not, and then the blessing is not a blessing in, in regards to what we prayed for. It would rather be that we trust him, we let go, and he will bless us what, with what he thinks or knows what is best for us. So our challenge in, lives, in our life is not, not just to, to pray and to just, just to come to God and just talk to him. It's more like, how do we pray? How do we come to God? Do we come to God with, the, with just pure motives? Like, hey, God, I surrender my life to you and I just want you to have my life and do with me what, as you please. Or is it more like, hey, God, I come to you and I love you, and I worship for 20 minutes, and then I have my, my list with 10 points. God, I need you to do this, 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 this. Oh, and thank you, by the way, that you're so amazing. Goodbye. I know, for my life, I've done that for a very, very long time, and um, I am not throwing any accusations at you. I'm saying, hey, this is what I know to be true for my life. It used to be true. I'm, I'm getting better. I'm getting better, I have to say that, but it's still that I know that I need to start to trust God. And I love how in, um, in the verse we just read in verse 6, it says, Hey, as for me, I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your love, for you saw my affliction and knew the anguish of my soul. So what David says is, hey, for one thing, he trusts God. And the second point, I will, I will be glad and rejoice in your love. For you saw my affliction and knew the anguish of my soul. He does not state, hey, I am happy because God gave me everything I wanted. It's, it's more like, hey, he finds peace in God's love. And he finds peace in what God says about him. And he says, hey, God, you knew my trouble and you rescued me. So maybe in life we go through situations where we think we see a certain situation. And we think... That is the way God needs to handle it. Like David could say, hey, for you to my affliction, I knew the anguish of my soul, and you did everything according to my plan. It's not what it says. It says, hey, it just says, you saw my affliction and knew the anguish of my soul. Well, I believe that for our lives, what we can say is, hey, God, you see the afflictions of our soul. You see the issues we face, but we surrender our will to you. And we say, God, we're not going to control how you're going to do this, but what we're going to do is we're going to just say, God, why don't you just take over our lives? Why don't you take over our hearts? And why don't you just show me how you see the situation? Show me what do you think of this and how can I let go? How can I let go of control? And how can I just trust you? How can I rest? Because God is not saying, hey, you need to trust me. Uh, and then he stops there. He says, hey, I want to help you that you can trust me. I want to help you in your unbelief. It's not like God just comes to you and throws all of these requirements at you. He's a God of, of, of a relationship. So which means when you get to know him, when you get to know how he thinks and how he thinks about you, you can make the decision in your life that you say, hey God, no matter what I'm facing, I will trust you and I'm letting go of control. For me, like I said in the, in the short testimony I just told you, for me it was like I prayed so long and my problem was I told God what he was supposed to do. I said, what I said was basically that, um, that I know better what God, what I knew better what, how my life is supposed to run. I knew better what is good for me. So I prayed, God, do this for me, do this for me, do this for me. And I let no space for him in my life. But rather, what we should do is we should say, hey, God, we surrender to you. We have this issue in our life. We have these problems in our life. God, my, for example, hey, maybe in our, your family or in, our fam in your family, you have someone who doesn't believe. Maybe you want them to believe. So God gave you tools what you can do for that person. But most importantly, pray and trust God. That is so important. You cannot control, you cannot control the outcome of that person's life. You cannot you cannot say, you cannot shake the person and say, hey, become a Christian, believe in God. That's, unfortunately, that's not how it works. But what you can do is you can love that person, you can be an example with your life, and you can pray for that person. You can let go of control and just say, hey, God, I just want to trust you that you just, you see this person, you love this person, and you want that person to be saved more than me. 
You are more interested in that person than I am, actually. So what we need to do is we need to change our perspective. We need to come to the point where we can say, God, hey, show me how you see this situation and show me how you want me to react in this situation and help me to trust you. Help me to know that actually you mean well. You mean well with me. For a lot of times in our lives, what we do is we say, hey, God, or what, what maybe I can say it differently. What, I, what I'm getting at is that, hey, so what we do is we, we have this attitude that God doesn't mean it well with us. We think we have to pray and control everything because we do not think if we let go, God will not do it the way we want it. And we don't believe God means well with us. We think if we let go, God will do something. I prayed for a blue car and God will give me a pink car, for example. But maybe God knows that the pink car is the right car for you and the red car or the blue car is not the right car for you. The, my point is that God knows better what is good for us. But we have to come to that point where we know that what God wants for us is better than what we want for us. And we get there by knowing him. That's the only way where you can fully, fully trust God is when you get to know him intimately. When you get to know him in a way you've never known him before because then you know, hey, God means well with me. I have no problem of letting go. You knew David, right? When he came and he fought Goliath, what he said was, you come to me with sword and spear, but I come to you in the name of the living God, the God of the angel armies whom you just defiled. That sounds to me like David knew his God. David knew who is on his side. But that, he didn't just get that by just reading books or just looking at fl sunflowers. He got that by having time with God, by writing poetry, by being with the one who created him. So for our lives, our goal needs to be to trust God, to know God, and by knowing God, to trust him. That is how I found that for me, and I spend time with God and I shift my focus on how good he is and what he means, how well he means, how well he wants my life to work, go, then I can just rest because I know that I can let go of striving because I know that God will take care of it. God will take care of your life. God will take care of what we face when we decide to say, God, I want to commit myself completely to you. I'm letting go of control. I'm just surrendering to you and knowing that no matter how my life will go, it is good because you are good. God is good and he does good things. So I want to close with this statement. A friend of mine many, many years ago, he said, hey, how would your life go or how would you perceive your life when you see everything through that perspective, God means well with me. So think about that. If everything you do today, no matter what happens or whatever you face, you know God means well with you. How will your day go? So that's my challenge for you today, that as you go through life, as you leave morning prayer, that you would go out and just have this perspective, hey, God, you mean well with me. So everything that I face, I know you're with me. Amen. God, you're so amazing. And I thank you that you mean well with us. Thank you, God, that you love us. And thank you, God, that you, you just want to be with us. So we surrender our hearts to you this morning. We surrender our thoughts to you this morning, knowing that no matter what we face, no matter what we go through, you're the one who has the last word. You're the one who just, yeah, who just speaks to us and just gives us rest. So we come to you with all our fears, with all our anxieties, and we just surrender them to you, knowing that no matter what we face, God, you have the last word. And you are so good. So thank you, Father, that we have with you a Father who is full of love, who is full of interest in our lives. And we gladly surrender ourselves to you. Amen. Amen.